you know, this wants greasing really as well. Right in there. Engineering. Engineering. There we are. And I'll try the bushes in and see what it looks like. See if it looks right faster than that. Time for two best mates to work together. Now then YouTube, welcome to another video. Very exciting video because I'm going to be working on the three best cars, the three star cars of this channel. The 5 Series, the 3 Series Touring and the MR2. Everybody's favourite cars, yeah? Now speaking of favourite cars, you may notice this lovely little t-shirt I've got on. And you might be thinking, damn that's a nice t-shirt, where can I buy one from? Well. I'm glad you agree it's a nice t-shirt because it took quite a few iterations and changes to uh, get this design looking somewhat presentable. I, I really like it. These are the DC2 Rebuild Fund and you know although every little helps on the money side of things as we all know it's time that I really need and I can't get anyone to buy me any time. I tried speaking to DiCaprio and his mates uh, from Inception but not having it. And they can't give me any more time to get on with the DC2, which, you know, a bit of a shame there, but, you know, I made the inquiries. But what DiCaprio did say was, I quite like your t-shirt, where can I get one? Well, there's a, a website, it's just dannydc2.com, that just links into the Teespring store, and you can, you can buy a DC2 Rebuild t-shirt, look at that. So this is a design from Downchange, got the logo there and the, and the car there, obviously. Every little helps, a lot of people have bought them already which I'm appreciative of. There's also mugs and stuff and I've actually got quite a few nice t-shirt designs now believe it or not so if you've not seen please have a look and please consider purchasing one because it just you know helps me out a lot or it's it has the potential to help me out a lot. So um, yeah that's the that's the advert out of the way. Buy a t-shirt or a mug if you don't mind. Uh, what we're doing in today's video then well Sorry, hopefully that's not been the, the sweet sounds of, of Morrissey without his politics getting involved. Has not been ruining the audio there, I didn't realise it was on. But what that means is, you might be able to tell, the iDrive's working and it's back. The iDrive is back, I sent it off to Romania to get fixed after one of you lot recommended me a company and then I did a bit of research and this company in Romania called MCA, really good comms, they seem like top gents. And um, yeah, the, the price is pretty much what you'll pay in the UK after you've posted there and everything, but the communication and the general feel from the company is really good, so yeah, uh, recommended. But the only thing is, chaps, guess what they've done? They've updated the software on it, and it's wiped off my auxiliary. So luckily I had some backup CDs in the car, and um, yeah, I've been all right for a couple of days, but the first job of today is to hopefully code back in my auxiliary so uh, i've got me my little windows xp netbook there which i've had for years so that's my first job anyway we're going to be doing a few jobs on a few different cars today so it's just like a general workshop video we're going to be trying to get the rear end together on the three series so i've got bushes i've got some new reciprocating saw blades to attack the rear subframe someone has burnt the subframe bushes out but we just need to cut out the outer race and then we've got either replacing a bush on the MR2. I've bought a bush off a Lexus IS200, which looks like it might fit, but we don't know yet. So perhaps replace that rear, the bearing bush, the spherical bush at the back. Um, if not, I've got a good spare hub, which I've got off the blue car from last year, which if it comes to it, we'll just replace the hub. And um, I do apologize for the exposure. That's not very good, is it? I don't know how that's happened. My face might look a bit more normal now. Yeah, sorry about that, I had the exposure on a bit high. But anyway, coding in the auxiliary, that should not be any bother. The Bluetooth stuff's already plugged in, so let's see. If you want to know more about this process, I actually did a full video on this um, shortly after picking up the car two years ago, a year ago? A year ago, maybe. Last February, so have a look at my old videos. There's a, there's a full DIY kind of video on how to add Bluetooth on the cheap on this thing. But let's hope I can just code this back in. So I've got my cable from Mr. Cable Shack in the northeast. Top man. And I've got my where are you? My little netbook which I've had for ten years maybe. 
I'll let you listen to the XP startup sounds, but other than that, I'm just going to try and crack on. Play the sound. Yeah, boy. And that's how long I've had this laptop. Me and my 172 phase one. Odyssey Blue, bro. Now, this is not what you want to see when you plug the cable in on Windows XP. Please tell me it's some old ratchet software that only works on XP. Oh, it, my of God. course it's XP. It actually does. Of course it's Windows <laughs> XP, lad. Why would you trust any other operating system it's to like code? Vagcom stuff, that only works on XP. Mate, I've got Vagcom there, look. Have you? Yeah. Oh, my God, what a blast of the past. Where is it? Focus. There you go. Release 409. You couldn't make it up, could you? It works. It is working! Okay, moment of truth, chaps. Did my coderings, workerings... Um, just get... Yeah. Oh, why have you got a fork there, Dan? What do you fucking think I've got a fork there for, you clown? Alright, we're gonna test it. Have I now got auxiliaries? Is the DC2 pl- Oh, he's there! Does it work? fucking works so he's a little bit quiet for some reason but yes boy back in business right one job done uh, MR2 next oh hmm I think MR2 next priority in it priority number one MR2 yeah right I'll just get this packed away should we have an XP turn off sound to play us out Look at this, I've been blocked in by a dutty Land Rover. Oh, it's not focusing. Can't focus on the dut. Does anyone like Mercedes powered Land Rovers with turbos? Hmm. And tunes. Right, we're starting on the MR2. We can't put it on the ramp because that Land Rover, believe it or not, his clutch has gone and he's just limped it there. Because I was in the way, he couldn't come in any further. So, you know, ramp not available. But, you know, we can do it on the floor. No problem. Do you like my t-shirt? Can I buy one? <laughs> available now. Okay then, what's happening? Well, there's the spare hub, which I'm thinking we're most likely gonna have to put on. And I've started pulling out uh, the knackered bush, The, the <sighs> it's not really a bush, is it? They call it a bearing bush, they call it a spherical, they call it all sorts of stuff, this thing. This is what it looks like, I've got... I'll show you this Lexus one that I bought. Don't mind the mess. So the reason I keep calling it a ball joint, or I do keep calling it a ball joint, is because that's what it is. But I understand um, a lot of people call it as a, a bearing bush as well, right? Sphericals. So this might fit, might not fit. But the old one's coming out quite nice. There's not a great deal of room under here because of the other track arm there. See it? So because of the, the front bush on the hub, there's not a lot of room here. So I'm actually just using one of the nuts with a washer in between and this side. And it's just gonna pull it through hopefully. But it's going pretty well. It's a two-handed job. Oh, is it a two-handed job? Because that might just that might sit quite nice on there. But that's one on the job now. <laughs> well, I've got the bush out. That's pretty easy actually. Now that's the good news, it was easy to get out. The bad news is the one from the Lexus, which I've bought, is a good bit bigger. And it's not going to work. No es bueno, por favor. That was £15 just to try it and see if it would work. Nah. I've also checked the ones from the BMW for the E46. I've got some brand new ones for, for that as well. And they're, again, way bigger. So that's a shame. So it is going to be a hub swap day. So we'll be taking the hub off. We need to change the bush as well. This is the hub here. We need to change the bush that's in there. Should be no problem for the kit, but We'll see how I'll start stripping this down and getting it off. Hmm, joyous joys. Right, the hub is off the car. Nice easy job. 
Uh, left this sensor in because it's a pain in the ass to get out and usually just snaps. Uh, I've had that before where it just snaps. So left that in and yeah, we're going to have to just change the plug for some reason. I think I, I ripped the plug out or something before. And um, yeah, it's not got the OEM plug on, but it's just two wires. So swap that across, bish bash bosh. I just need to get this heat shield off because it's crusty as fuck and it's... Um, yeah, it's not having, a, not having a good time, that is it. Um, and then we need to switch. We need to get this rubber bush out and put the poly bush in from this hub. Now, the bearing feels pretty good. It's a bit stiff, but it's been sat for a long time. But it feels not too bad. Pretty happy with that. And um, the other thing is what I was just thinking now about this the brake dust. I wonder if I've had a failure of the rear bush because I don't have a, a dust shield on the back of it, eh? I wonder if that's the thing. Well, obviously it is a thing because this dust shield is protecting that ball joint which is, you know, right next to it. So maybe the, the heat of the disc has caused premature death of, uh, of this ball joint. But I don't want to use this one because it's, it's knackered. Um, so I'm going to take it off anyway, but food for thought. Now the reason this heat shield's here is to protect things like this, but yeah, I think it's just died a death because of all the curb popping and stuff we've done. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's got excessively hot or anything, I think it's just uh, just worn out as these things do. So yeah, anyway, I'll get everything switched across now and we'll make this one look like that one, get it back on the car, and then we're going to start prepping the rear subframe for the green bastard, yeah, which is... Nice and local, it's just over there, look. Behind the step ladder. How to remove rusty old brake discs. Shields, dust shields, brake discs, dust shields. But you can call them dust shields, or you can call them heat shields, because I guess they're kind of doing both. Time for two best mates to work together. Uh, so these are actually bolted on, but you can't get to them, but you can kind of get to them, but they're all rusty and stuff. You're meant to take the flange off and then do it, but that ain't easy. This is easy. I know what you're thinking, and yeah, Adrian Newey did actually tell me how to do this. Just kidding, you can't teach this. That's how you remove it. You end up with a bit of flack here, look, but you can just, if you want it. Get rid of that unsprung mass. You know, give it a few taps. Fucking minty. Now we'll get this bush out while it's in the vise. Beautiful. Well, this isn't going as well as the other bush, the bearing. Got the centre bit out. Obviously, I didn't want to do that, but I couldn't get it to sit square with the uh, pushing the outer race out. Now there's a socket trapped in there at an angle, which is not good. So I'm going to have to cut the outer race. Good job I got those new reciprocating saw blades. Cut the outer race and tap it out. But that's fine. We know what we're doing. Engineer, out of the race is out. Let's get the poly bush in.
finish the wiring next. Right, we're good. I'm just fucking wang some loom tape around that to make it look all pretty. But she sold it on, happy days. Um, it's time to pay homage to Ronald and have some tea. Uh, I'll give this a little clean before I put it on just so that these surfaces don't, you know, make everything aids. Cheers, Dan. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we'll give this a quick wipe down just with the brush, just to clean it a little bit. Make sure none of this shit gets stuck, you know. This one's greasing, really, as well. Right in there. But, yeah, I'll catch you when I've made some progress. How's that sound? Hey, look, it's all done. I know what you're thinking, damn, that looks like fucking brand new, mate. Like, you've even used fabric tape rather than electric chickens tape. It's true, it's true. I am a, a man of culture these days. Use a new tire as well. Um, copper grease in a can. In a can. Because I want to spray it in the uh, bore after cleaning it, you know, where the uh, drive shaft goes. So, uh, yeah, and obviously did a bit on the, on the hub face as well. But yeah, she's good to go. So, let's get her back on the car with her it's tight as fuck, that bush. Class. Well chuffed with it. Bump, bump, bump. So, nice little refurb anyway. I've cleaned up where the caliper and everything sits as well. Just got a bit of grease on there, no bother. Let's get it on the car. Right, hub's back on pretty much. Everything's bottled together. Just need to put the caliper on. But this will make you laugh. He's just been washing his car because it was a bit sunny. And then it's just like rained the most it's ever rained in a short amount of time that I've known in recent years <laughs> and he got fucking soaked <laughs> alright Ed <laughs> uh, the band's been real leaky lately so I mean look at the MR2 like it's just happened now look all this lovely water all over the fucking shop anyway yeah nearly done on job 2 and we're moving on to job 3 Alright chaps, MR2 all done, so we're on to the last job of the day, which is this E46 subframe, which is obviously in lovely condition as we know. Now this is a bit worse than what I remembered, because I didn't order any diff bushes. I've just got the subframe bushes, and the trailing arm bushes, and maybe something else actually, I don't know, I'll have to check. Right, so we've got the subframe bushes here, trailing arm bushes. And then I've got poly bushes for the inside of the OEM arms that go into the subframe. And then on the outside, I've got new ball joint bearing thing, the same as what we were doing on the MR2. Those uh, little bearing spherical bush things. Um, got new ones of them for the outside on the trailing arm. So that pretty much covers all bases. The only thing that I'm missing, like I say, is diff bushes. I didn't realize someone had had a go. Yeah, I don't, I don't, those handbrake cables are just chilling. I didn't realise someone had already had a go at trying to get them out. So someone's tried in the past to burn these out. Which hasn't gone too well by the look of it. Now we can do this one of two ways, a bit more successful on the front too. We can just go at it with the reciprocating saw now and tap the outer race out. Or we can try and press it out with the bush tool thing that I showed you earlier. I'm going to start with a saw and see how I get on. Yeah, I'll start with a saw. Right, that first one came out pretty easy. Using the old slot it and tap it out method. You saw me do that earlier, or try and do that earlier, with the outer race on the bush that was in the MR2 hub. But, I'm sure you want to watch me do it again. So, I'll give you a front row seat. Recording? Yeah. yeah. Just to show the engineering. Engineering. Yeah, these have like got to come together a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I've seen people try this before and end up putting it into the subframe, which. Morons. Bad doo doo. So it's just when you're an engineer oh. like me, you just oh. get the feel for it. Look, it's a little love heart for you. Oh, fuck at that. Oh, good effort. Way. As easy as that. Engineering. Engineering. Right, that's all for the bushes out. 
Uh, reciprocating saw did the business there. Real tough with that. Uh, the ones that had a bit more rubber around, if you're curious, I ended up putting two slits in. Uh, definitely more difficult having the, the inner race ish. I don't know if it's really classed as an inner race. They're, they're this, I presume it's plastic. They had this gooey shit in there. Um, I mean, you saw what it looked like before, but all four bushes are out now. So I'm just going to give the balls a quick wipe, a quick clean down. And I'll try the bushes in and see what it looks like. See if it looks rate faster than that. Obviously, we need to get the diff bushes out as well. Might do that today while we're here. She's on a fucking roll, this one, so I might let her loose. Well, that was fun. So the front diff bush took as long to do probably as the other six. That was a great pain in the ass. Couldn't quite get in with the recip saw in the right place. And uh, yeah, even even drew blood. So I got through through the full day without drawing any blood and then I, I drew some blood. But yeah, I've just uh, quickly cleaned up the bars on here and just, just sat the bushes in just for a little test fit. Just for like a celebratory, celebratory? Just for like a celebratory um, end to the, the video where you got some, some bushes somewhat in. Obviously I can't put this subframe together yet because I need to get those diff bushes, the front and the rear. And yeah, I mean, most likely will we go AM for the front? We might go AM for the front. I'll see what options are available. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a little while will know I had um, a bad time at the Nürburgring last year caused by a poly bush in the front. But um, that's us coming to the end of the day, so let me just have a quick tidy up and we'll have an outro. Well chaps, that's all from today. So we've fixed the auxiliary on the E61 and the iDrive's all fully functional and all Romanian approved. Uh, it's really good actually, I can't complain. You know, half decent price and it works, so... Getting it back through customs was a bit of pain in the ass. I had to prove it was my item and they tried to charge me import duty and all that shit, but... Managed to get away with that. I drive's working and we've got auxiliary, so that's good. We've replaced the rear hub on the MR2, so we've no longer got any dramas with that bush. It's a shame the Lexus bush wasn't the same. I will continue my hunt for a replacement, because I'm, you know, I'm aware there are certain companies that will sell me one. But it's a lot of money. Pretty loud, that, isn't it? So there's still quite a few things to do on the MR2 before the race which is in a fortnight, as I said. I've got next weekend to piss about pretty much and you know, nights through the week, so I'm sure I'll get it done. There is one video I wanna make um, surrounding that and it's gonna be to do with the corner balancing once I get my new toy. I've got some, some hub stands coming, so you know, I'll be able to adjust the coilovers and everything without the wheels on, which will make everything so much better. It'll be a, a pleasure, I'm sure. So that's something to look forward to. And then obviously we've We've made a, a little bit of a start. It's the first kind of mechanical work I've done for the new drift car, other than, you know, ferrying it about a little bit. So we've got the subframe bushes are all out. Um, mental note that I need to order some diff bushes, but eh, everything else, good to go. And guess what? I know a few of you commented saying, you know, you need to strengthen the boot floor and all that. Well, you know, I'm quite aware of E46s. I've had that quite a while now, and I've had E46s in the past. And um, yeah, I, I don't want to fill up the outro, you know, with waffle about my thoughts on, you know, why they fail and how to repair them. But um, I don't think just putting a plate on is the be all and end all. And get this, that car's 20 years old and has been abused for the past three years. Well, it's not been on the road for a little bit, but it's had a lot of abuse. And there's not even a hint of a crack in that rear subframe. Now you could argue that prevention's cheaper than the cure and all that, but we had one, Dan Z46, that used to live here, if you watched some of my older videos. When he got that, that was in a right state, ripped absolute shreds. And uh, Dan, the other Dan, the welder Dan, managed to fix it, no bother. It's just a cheap, fun car at the end of the day. And you know, when you do put poly bushes on, they do spread the load a bit better anyway, in theory, so. It'll do for a quick, cheap day at Driftland. That's all it needs to do. You must know by now I'm not, I'm not the big guy. I put that clutch back in. The clutch that was missing material, I put it back in the car. So that's that's my attitude. And if you knew, you know my name's Dan and all that. This is what I'd, I'm just not that asked. And you know you can 
Maybe try and learn a bit from me. Don't be so arsed. Just fucking go for it. Get it together. Get out there. Don't speak about my integrity like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks to the Patreons. Buy a t-shirt, don't forget. Hopefully by the end of summer it'll be a running car. I want to have it running by winter, that never happens. Uh, by Christmas, that never happens. But I'm thinking, end of summer, it's just time, it's, it's time. If I quit my job, then I'd have loads of time. Which is, you know, it's a thought, isn't it? It's a thought. So, uh, yeah, keep, if you buy loads of t-shirts and all that, here's a thought. You subscribe to the Patreon, buy a t-shirt, and then I can quit my job and I can do the Integra in like a week. Hey, fancy that? You know what to do? Send me the message. Otherwise, we'll carry on like this for a little bit. And I'll see you in the next video. Probably some, some corner waiting on the MR2. If not something else, maybe another Green Bastard video. Uh, took ages to get those strong flex bus It took about a month to arrive, man. But, um, yeah. Won't be any time soon to get those diff bushes, but we'll see what we get. All right, that's all from today then. A nice little waffle on the, on the conclusion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.